Today on Real Life, instilling faith into your family. We'll take a look at why leaving a spiritual legacy behind is so important. Plus, an exclusive interview with the co-creator of Veggie Tales, Mike Naraki, shares his story of unshakable faith, all that and so much more right now on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you in the Bible as your and my guide to abundant life. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert and Don and Terry Black are off today, but you know what? The Holy Ghost is in the house and I'm so excited to be with Pastor Amy Schaefer as hey, well. Hey, Pastor J. What's up? You want to tell everybody what you called me beforehand? J Dog. <laughs> D A W G. J That's going to be my new name for some of y'all out there. So uh, you can call me Pastor J Anthony Dog, I guess. Well, so somebody asked me one time, are you guys friends? Because, you know, two pastors, you would think there'd be a little competition, but no, he's my J Dog. He's, hey, he's a just, bro, man. We just make it do what it do. Him and Tiffany are just amazing human beings. Hey, Amen. Well, you know, I'm so excited about today. Mm -hmm. um, Veggie Tales. I yeah. mean, I'm a big Veggie Tales fan. My, I have a three-year-old and uh, a 20-month-old, and uh, just awesome, awesome messages that come along. You know, I have them all memorized, every single yes. one of them. So, I mean, my goodness. Uh, well, you know, Veggie Tales, Veggie. I mean, I do too, and it's been a while since yeah. we've watched Veggie Tales. But I especially love the Christmas Veggie Tales. Yeah. With Saint Nicholas. Yeah. I love it, and Esther. And do, okay, this is crazy. One of my secret, like, back shelf dreams is to be a voice on Veggie Tales. Really? Okay. Well, I guess that's going to be coming and up next, right? I can't believe I just <laughs> told everybody that. That is a back dream, back on the shelf. But kids are so—it's so, it's so, so important, important yeah. that we we take like Psalm seventy-eight. We take these truths and these lessons that we've learned from the Bible, and we pass them down to the next generation, Amen. so that their generations. At, so we keep this message of Christ alive and the legacy of faith in our families. It's powerful. And that's so important, you know, and I'm so thankful because yesterday we talked about how the church needs to reach the next generation. And today we're going to be focusing a lot on how the family mm -hmm. needs to reach this generation. You know, I think it's so important for men mm -hmm. to take their place as well. That's right. It's so important. If you're a man out there, you need to tune in. If you're a lady, tune in. If you're a married couple, tune in. We need to make sure that we do pass that legacy Mm -hmm. on and uh, we have a wonderful man here Ch Terrence Chapman that's going to be talking about it. you don't want to miss today it is going to be such a great blessing so I'm so excited about what he's going to be sharing um, you know statistics say that most uh, of the time the the woman the mother of the family finds the church to get their kids planted in wow. so how about we just dream up of all of these men and just pray that men will rise up and be the spiritual leaders in our homes and I really think it would change I know it would change communities and, and whole churches and whole families. And people don't even realize how important men are in the family right. because men are the initiators. Mm -hmm. We are the spiritual ones that are supposed to get the family going. So today we want to make sure that we step forward and be the men of God that God's right. called us to be. Man, I'm praying for you. Ladies, pray for us that we'll be the leaders that God's called us to be. And so stick around because we got a whole lot more coming up. But right now, God is always working all around us. And if we open our eyes, we will always see God in the headlines. Let's check it out. A young California woman on her way to a Bible study survived a crash that split her car in half. Apple Lasang says she leaned on her faith when an SUV slammed into her car near Cloverdale. The 25-year-old says as the vehicle charged towards her, she asked God to save her. The force of the crash tore through her car right down the middle. Miraculously, Lasang only had some pain and a few bruises from the accident. The other driver also survived and was taken to the hospital. Police say they're amazed Lasang walked away from the crash alive. Video footage of the wreckage has gone viral. It's been seen by millions of people. Lasang says she's always devoted herself to God and wants to be an instrument for him. 
What a powerful story that is. That would be scary. Yeah, right. How does a car get torn in half? Wow. Thank God for his protection and his angels. Even last night, um, I was reading Judah, I believe it's Psalm 121, just about how he, he doesn't sleep or slumber. Yeah. He protects us, he watches over us, he keeps us from harm. Like we really have to believe God's word, especially as your kids start to drive. I'm like, I'm like right there where, where my daughter's driving. And I, I have to believe God and pray and hold on to the promises of God because your mind can take you to, sure. to crazy places. And you, you, you don't realize how close you are. You're one accident away, one person taking mm -hmm. a bad turn before mm -hmm. your car split in half. You yeah. know, I take the turnpike almost every morning to get yeah. here. And you think about people driving 80 miles an hour and you know, you're just one person falling asleep. You're riding between semis and things along that line. I mean, anything can happen at any moment. So we thank God for the power of prayer and yeah. being praying Protection. people. Always pray over your children. Pray over your family. Pray with husbands. Pray with your wives and your family every day. Mothers, pray over your children. Fathers, pray over your children. Prayer is so important. And we push prayer here as well. That's why at any time throughout this show today, call that number on your screen, 888 665 44 Eight, three. We've got anointed men and women of God that are prayer partners that are anointed by God to believe with you and stand in line with you for a supernatural breakthrough to hit your life. And mm -hmm. I'm thank, I thank God for our prayer partners. Yeah, I do too. You know, sometimes you just in life, um, you're just going through stuff and you need somebody to just come alongside you Amen. and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to believe God with you. And really, we're letting you know that you're not alone, yeah. that there is a whole army of people that are with you, praying for you, really. I mean, when we're out and about, I get to talk to people and I hear their stories and we really do care about you and we really are concerned about those things which you're concerned about. Well, you might recognize him as Larry the Cucumber from the hit kid series, Veggie Tales. And on this edition of Today's Life, Terry Squires introduces us to the man behind the vegetable. Let's take a look at Mike Narwaski's story of unshakable faith. God often calls us to step out in faith, not knowing if we will succeed or fail. If we are faithful, he will see us through it all. We all know it's one of the greatest Christian animated series for children, VeggieTales. It has reached millions of families worldwide. But what inspired co-creator Mike Naraki to leave a study and desire for a medical career to venture out into the world of animation? How did God change his life and faith through the ups and downs of one of the greatest Christian video series of all time? This is his story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Life. Mike, thank you so much for inviting me into your home in the world of VeggieTales. Now, what would Larry the Cucumber say to me right now? <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to my home, <laughs> my house of vegetables. <laughs> VeggieTales has been an amazing property and around the world. Take me back to where it all started. Wow, well, you know, maybe I could go back to um, even where I, I felt the call, you know, to, to do ministry. Um, you know, I grew up loving to make people laugh. Um, you know, I was a big fan of a lot of different comedies. Um, uh, Mel Brooks, uh, the Dr. Demento Radio Hour was probably my favorite thing. Uh, it was parody music, you know, since so where Weird, Weird Al got his start, so I just loved uh, making people laugh, and I came to Christ um, when I was in middle school. So um, my uh, my dad had uh, just just become a believer, and uh, you know all of all of us. I grew up with three brothers, and my mom. We kind of all noticed we had a new dad, and were interested in what that was, and so we started going to church, and um, 
uh, for me, it was watching a Billy Graham crusade on TV. Love and, Billy uh, Graham. Yeah, yeah. Love so, him. so, um, so I, I came to Christ in middle school, um, and. I found an outlet for that creativity through the church that I started going to. So if there was a play or, or a choir or, or anything I could be in, I just, I loved doing that. Um, but I felt a call in, in later in high school to serve in ministry, um, but I didn't know what that looked like. For me, I was, uh, I, I, you know, I had this passion for drama and music and theater, but I didn't have a model for what that could look like in a ministry angle. However, my dad was an engineer, my mom was a nurse, my older brother was a chemistry major, so I, I kind of took those models and I said, well, you know, maybe, and then the, the church that I was going to was very missions-minded, and I thought, well, what I'm gonna do for God is I'm gonna be a medical missionary, and so that's, that's the direction I'm gonna head off on. Um, so I went to a small denominational college up in uh, the Minneapolis area, Crown College is what it's called now, St. Paul Bible College is okay. at the time, and that's where I met Phil Vischer. Uh, who's also known as Bob the Tomato. And so Phil and I um, began uh, collaborating on a puppet team there. So it was a student ministry. All the students were required to do a ministry. And I'd done some puppetry in high school, and so had he. And so we just really hit it off creatively. We would love to just, you know, write these crazy stories. And, you know, and we, we, we traveled around with our troop going to different locations. And we'd like to say we roamed the Minnesota countryside scaring the Baptists. <laughs> that was our favorite, our favorite line. And so, but we found this creative collaboration. We got to be really good friends. Um, but he had a plan to go to, uh, to go to film school. That's what he wanted to do. I wanted to go to medical school. We were at the small college. Both of us thought, well, we'll, we'll just go here for a while because, you know, we didn't have those educational opportunities there. So, uh, we ended up, you know, uh, going our separate ways after a year and a half there, but then I ended up moving to Chicago to, to go to, uh, you know, per, to pursue pre-med. Uh, which is where Phil was living as well. Um, Isn't that and so, interesting how he brought you back? Got yeah, you back abs absolutely. And Veggie Tales has just boomed. Take me back. Do you remember the days when, you know, everybody wanted Veggie Tales? It was so surprising because animation is sort of the thing where you, you're in the studio making the donuts, you're making the you know, animation, you're producing it, and then you're sending it out, and people are watching it, you know, away from, you know, where it's being produced. You know, it's like if you're in theater, you know, you're, you're in front of a live audience, you're seeing how people react. Um, it was really interesting to start getting the feedback back in those early years, because we loved the shows, we'd send it out, and, we, and then we started getting feedback, oh, you know, people are liking this and they want you to make another show, okay, make another show. And then you start to hear that college kids are having uh, VeggieTales watching parties and we're like, really? T-shirts, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Toys. All those sort of things. And, um, you know, we were really new to it. And, uh, but it was really, you know, it was very surreal to know that, you know, it was really catching on. And even those first few years from 1993 to about 1995, we were, you know, still struggling to keep the lights on. Even though, you know, we were getting advances uh, on production, they were still really lean, and you know, we were, you know, struggling just to produce the shows. But, you know, over, you know, from around 1995, 96, it really started to catch on. And hey, why don't you guys do an album too? Because you you can just combine some of the songs that you've used in your, you know, in your videos to to make a music album. So okay, so we threw a few of the songs together, and then the album sold, you know, like crazy, and it was just very very surprising for us. And we're up in Chicago, which, you know, we were in the production field in Chicago, but Chicago is a very commercial. You know, they do a lot of commercials. It's not really an entertainment town, and so for us, just to kind of see, um, you know, this whole thing blooming all over the United States was was really, uh, you know, it was you know a surprise. You know, God takes us through those successes and then failures. Yeah. VeggieTales or the company had some really rough times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you share that with us? Yeah, you know, we um, we we grew a lot um, in the in you know from about ninety six to two thousand, um, and and we we overextended ourselves, and so by um, by the time we were in production of our first feature film, which was Jonah. Um, we were self-financing that. At the time, um, nobody wanted to do a, a faith-based film. Now you see a lot of faith-based films. For them, you know, we couldn't get you know, outside funding for that because people just weren't doing it. And so we were funding uh, Jonah from uh, ourselves. Um, and then we had to, you, to do that, we had to slow down uh, production of our DVDs or VHS series at the time. And so we overextended ourselves. We were also launching a new property, 321 Penguins. Um, and by the time the movie came out, we went through bankruptcy. 
and so basically lost lost everything. Um, thankfully, the brand was still very strong, and we got purchased, and you know, VeggieTales was able to continue. But that that process of of growing and 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 losing everything, um, and it was, was just that was a really that was a really uh, tough time to go through, um, and just just coming to terms with what that what that meant, um, and um, but. But in the end, it was for me. It was uh, I remember um, just uh, there was a Twyla Paris song at the time, "God Is in Control," that I just remember you know listening to when it would come on the radio, and it was just very meaningful knowing that you know this is this isn't in my control; it's in God's control, and whatever He thinks He wants to do with it, you know that that's up to Him, and I just need to be faithful and I need to do what He wants me to do in the whole situation. So one of the questions I want to ask before we close is how your faith has taken you from success to you know going through the bankruptcy to where you are now and you know for me it's a matter of um, you know you think of Job you know the, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord where do you sit just that attitude because I think at times too even even when you when you're you're in a time of plenty there's, there's that, you can feel guilty about that too. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, you know, look, look what I have, you know, people don't have, maybe I shouldn't have this much. Or when you don't have, when you're in your time of need, it's like, wow, God isn't giving this to me, you know. Um, but I think in both of those places, if you can just, if you can just sit in a place of gratitude, you know, the Lord, the Lord has, has given this to me, thank you, God. Or the Lord has taken this away from me. Thank you, God, because there's other things I can learn through this. You know, so it's not necessarily seeing material things as a blessing from God. It's just what it is, and just just relying on God in everything, whether in, in plenty or whether in, in need. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your life and your stories, and you have been such a blessing to parents and children around the world. Thank you so much, Terry. Isn't it wonderful how God has given us all gifts and talents to share His message of love, grace, and forgiveness? Remember, you too have a story to tell that will give Him honor and glory. This is Today's Life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Right, so that scripture he mentioned is not one of my favorite scriptures right, in the world, right. right? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, it, as a good parent, it's not always beneficial for me to just give, give, give everything that my children demand and expect of me, right? Like right. You, there's some wisdom and there's some navigating. And what I found out is some of the the greatest gifts in my life have been things that were taken away that I yeah. thought was a huge problem, a huge issue, but it, it was a blessing. It yeah. it turned out shifting into a whole other direction that had that not have happened, we wouldn't have been at this place today. So I, I'm thankful, like he said, on the journey of the ups and the downs and knowing that sometimes life isn't just good, 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 better, better, better. It's, it, there are hills and valleys. There are things we go through and navigate, but God is with us through it all and he's helping us navigate through it all. Amen. And you know, everybody can deal with increase. Yeah, that's, that's easy. easy. Everybody can do that. You get the new house, you get the car, you know, the boyfriend said, let's get married. You know, you get the promotion on the job, but it's how we deal with decrease in our lives. Yeah. That's the difficult part in life. We all struggle with the decreases in life when you lose the job, when the money doesn't come through. I, I love the story that he mentioned there about how everything looked good on the screen, but yeah. then bankruptcy was building behind. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's some of you out there right now that everything looks good. You show up on Sunday morning, everything looks good, but there's things going on in your marriage, there's yeah. things going on in your family that nobody sees and nobody knows. But Jesus Christ knows today. And you know something, every time God decreases is your life, it's because he wants to increase himself in those things. Many times we're trusting in our money, we're trusting in our own wisdom, we're trusting in our own devices and resources, but God wants you today to begin to trust in him. Won't you trust in him today? 
Turn your life to him, even in your family today. Trust in him. And I believe there's people out there, Amy, that they need to really turn to God today and just begin to trust him, even in the midst of their decrease. Right, and I think that one of the reasons they don't trust him is because they don't feel loved by him. Even wow. Larry the Cucumber wow. would good. say, God made you special. That's right. And very simply, he loves you very much. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but you'll have everlasting Amen. life. That's the thing, God loves you. Yes, God cares about you. That's why you can trust him. That's why you can trust him as you're navigating life's journey. Will you pray this simple Amen. prayer with me? Will Amen. you just say, Father God, Father God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Thank you Thank for you. making me special. For making me special. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we believe if you prayed that prayer that you became born again. You became a brand new person. Will you give us a call at 888-665-4483? There is nothing like giving your life over Amen. to God. Amen. He is so faithful and so good and so kind and so gracious and so generous. Amen. And realize today, He really does love you. Jesus Christ loves you. There's some of you out there right now that are dealing with decrease in your life. You're dealing with a struggle. You're dealing with a setback. He loves you even in the midst of it all. Right. I feel the anointing of God going out right now just to comfort you. What you're feeling is the comfort of God. And sometimes you have to learn to trust God even when you can't trace Him. You may not be able to figure it all out in your head on what He's doing, but guess what? At the end of it all, with the, as we used to sing the song back in the day, we'll know it better by and by. God is with you. He's on your side. Your best and your blessed days are still yet to come. And you know what? We've got a whole lot more to come here on Real Life as well. This is how you can learn how your support of Cornerstone is spreading the love of Christ all around the world. But right after the break, how to raise your family to make an impact for the kingdom. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. When I lost my job, our bills kept coming faster than we could pay them. My wife and I feel like we were drowning, that there was no way to be free. My addiction became worse and worse until one day my wife found me on the floor. I need hope. I wish I could feel joy again. I've become so negative. Every day our prayer partners take calls from hurting people. We're working in God's harvest field 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Will you join us in this kingdom work? When you become a harvest partner, we're gonna send you our Turning the Tide teaching on DVD, two CD set, and a study guide. This is a powerful teaching to help turn the tide in your life. We'll send it along with our beautiful harvest partner mug. This is our gift to you, call now. You know, it's really great, Amy, that we have um, partners I know. that are donating and giving, uh, not donating, we all like the word donate, but yeah. giving to the kingdom of God right. to help the gospel go out. Oh yeah, it, it makes all of the difference. I mean, without you, we can do very little, but with you, we can do a whole lot of impacting the kingdom of God with the gospel and great messages like this today about, yes. we want your children to believe. We want you to leave a legacy of faith with your children. And I'm so excited we have here today from a six year old entrepreneur to leading <laughs> fortune 500 companies. We're not dealing with a novice. <laughs> Terrence Chapman always longed to leave his mark on the world, but he realized something more important. His family's faith was lacking. In his book, Do Your Children Believe? Terrence lays out how to leave a spiritual legacy for your loved ones. Terrence, welcome to Real Life, Yay. sir. All right, it's good to be here. Real life. Yeah, real man. Life. <laughs> I love this it. This is real life stuff, ain't it? That's it. This is the That's real it. deal, you know, Fortune 500 companies, yeah. all, I'm sure, big churches, you see all sorts of issues. And I love that whole thought about do your children believe? Because you know what, no matter how much money we make and how many PhDs we got, at the end of the day, the most important thing is our family. It really is, you know, it's, it, when we think about it all, the family is the lifeblood of, of, of our life, right? So we're raising our kids in a way 
not just for this generation, but for multiple generations to know who he is. Mm -hmm. And so we have a legacy to leave. We're going to leave a legacy one way or the other. That's right. Uh, the question is, what type of legacy are you going to leave? Amen. Well, I always tell people this. You can either leave your children your blessings or you can leave them your demons. That's it. You're going to pass on something <laughs> to your children. But why the title, Do Your Children Believe? You know, what else is, you know, if you think about the greatest purpose of life and as a parent, uh, it's just, we can do a lot of things in parenting. We can raise our kids, we can provide for them, we can provide a great house, etc. But the ultimate goal is to teach them who Christ is. Right. So the question is, right in front of you, do your children believe? It's your number one objective, in my opinion, as a parent, uh, to raise your kids in a way who know and love who Christ is. And that is such a great point because sometimes as adults, we are so busy with our careers, right. our life, the, the navigating the money, getting the food on the table, and then you forget almost the very basic, most important thing is, am I stopping and intentionally investing in my children, our faith? Well, that's my story, right? Yeah. So here I am, successful, quote unquote, in corporate America. I was leading some of the top corporations in the world. and. Uh, uh, but yet I was failing as the spiritual leader of my own home. Mm -hmm. And to put that in perspective, I was in church, we were raising our kids in the Lord, they knew who, who Christ was. But I had abdicated that responsibility to my wife in the church. Mm -hmm. And it's now time that we bring that back. And I, I was to be that. a spiritual leader in the home. So I wanted to do the right thing, I simply didn't know how. I, wasn't, I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a, a means to be intentional mm -hmm. in raising my kids this way. Now get this, I was raising kids in the church. I was a youth minister, I was a youth wow. pastor in the church. Wow. But yet in my own home, I had abdicated that to the church and my wife. So wow. dads, we've got to step up. Amen. And uh, Ephesians 6, 4 tells us fathers, really speaking the parents, mm -hmm. don't exasperate your children, which I was getting an A plus in, okay? I was, <laughs> I was provoking them to anger to, for some reason every day. But he says to what? Train and instruct them in the Lord. There's a reason that he gives us that, that, that message. Right. Well, you've got this wonderful book here, and I'm thinking about men out there. Me being a man, I have a three-year-old and a 20-month-old. Your kids are all teenagers mm -hmm. and up. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was thinking, how can a man take this book and become the spiritual leader of his family? Yeah. So this book is going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process. We've simplified the process. And, and let me just say this. It's not about the plan, and certainly we don't have a perfect family. I mean, we're struggling at, at this all, all the time. But what we're doing, this book will help you point them back to the cross, point them back to the source of where the ultimate power is. And we've made it very simple. And so what we've done is, is take a methodology that I kind of borrow from my, my work experience, right? Yeah. Uh, who has a vision statement for their home? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, what's the mental image that you like to see mm -hmm. for your family? Mm -hmm. We are a society of planning, right? <laughs> we've planned vacations, we plan all types of, you know, financial plans, all types of plans mm -hmm. we have but less than 1% of Christians have a biblical plan for their home, wow. a way to raise their kids in the Lord. Wow. That's shocking. So, you know, we have our, our vision statement written yes. down, which I love how you just took what we would do in organizations in the business world and really brought it into the family because it's really, you know, for me, the Schaefer organization, for you, the Chapman organization, yes. that this family that's going to go on and impact mm -hmm. many generations. And I love how you get a mission, get a vision, mm -hmm. get a plan. And, I, and I, it challenged me personally. We've got some of these things, but we were missing some things, some of this practical right. weekly intentional yeah. meetings with the family, imparting our faith. Tell me what that looks like in That's your right. family. Well, the reason we want to write this down particularly, you know, it was a Harvard and Yale study. Harvard says they did it first. Yale said they did it first, but who knows? <laughs> uh, but if you write things down, they get done. That's right. Uh, and so as we look at that, we wanted to write things down. But first, let me tell, let me suggest for everyone to start with prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Start with his book. Amen. Start reading what he's saying about your mm -hmm. family and what he's saying about parenting. Then, as you look at paper, pencil, and, and, and pen, and writing these things down, uh, journal about what's the vision, what, what, what's the destiny you have for your mm -hmm. family. The mission is about how do you accomplish the vision. Yeah. And then center that around the core values that you have as a family. You know, you know let's not make them all christian -y core values. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, education is a core value of the Chapman mm -hmm. family. Right, right, right. So what does that look like in my home? How do I make that a reality? So we center our vision and, and mission statements around our core values. Mm -hmm. And then let's set goals with your milestones. How are you going to achieve that? You know, how do you know if, if you're making it from Chicago to Atlanta, 
what's the milestones? What does it look like? How do I know if I'm, I'm making progress? And so uh, what does that look like? And we set three types of goals. Mm -hmm. We call them commitment goals, connection goals, and commission goals. Connection goals is what do I believe? Why do I believe it? Commission goes is, hey, how do I give it all away? How do I serve beyond the family? And commitment goes, how do I live out my faith? Mm. So how do we model this in the home? You know, more is caught than taught. And right. so they, they're watching everything we do. Mm -hmm. And so let's model it well. Mm -hmm. Because especially in today's generation, they're very interested in what they're seeing and, and you know, not what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. They want to see it. They want to witness it in the home. And then at the end of the day, here's one I love. Mm -hmm. You teach a three-year-old different than a 16-year-old. Yes. So there's an age and stage of yes. planning, right? right? And then we adopt a family member. Mm. What about that family member who clearly don't know Christ? Wow. What is as a family you're praying for that family member right. as an entire family? We've seen family members come to Christ as a result of it. And then finally, we have a covenant agreement, which is promises that we're making together. Mm -hmm. One of those, we do devotionals for the rest of our life. We're mm -hmm. still doing devotionals today. I got three kids, they're all out of the house, they're married, they know the Lord, it's a trifecta, right? Okay. But yet, even their spouses have gone through, and we do this every two weeks today on cell phones and, and conference calls. So it's that. a great plan. Well, you said that even, that was one of the commitments you made yes. with your children was that they couldn't marry somebody unless they were committed to this devotional time. <laughs> now, how do they do that when, you know, they're in probably different states, I'm guessing? Different states. Uh, so, hey, technology, right? We might as well okay. use it for something yeah, good. Right? Yeah. Now, we weren't being legalistic about it here, okay? Sure. Quote, unquote. Yeah. But the idea is a red flag. So we had an opportunity to get to know their significant others before they were married. Yeah. And we had a chance to really dig deep into who they were, what they were mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as we looked at those at opportunity, the kids suggested, you know, before we get married, let's get them on the phone. The kids suggested it? Yes. Wow. And let's experience it together. And, and I get a chance to meet my daughter-in-law and my, my son-in-law in a way that most parents don't get a chance awesome. uh, to meet them. Wow. So it was just been a blessing for us as a family. For somebody that has no clue how to write a vision statement for their family or a mission, can you give us sort of an inside look at yours or, or a sample of what you would suggest? Yeah. Well, keep it simple. Uh, you know, we have a model around it too. Uh, unity in the spirit is our aim. Yeah. So the idea is we want to see each other for eternity not right. just for today. Mm -hmm. So how do I get there? Mm -hmm. What's my destination? Mm -hmm. Well, for us, think about it like this. How do we teach them to fall madly in love with Christ? Right, that's the goal. Wow. Okay, wow. that's a vision. How do we get there, yeah. right? He already gives, he provides disciplines for us. Prayer, God's word, mm -hmm. worship. What does that look like in your home? How do we practice this? How do we make it come mm -hmm. real, right? Mm -hmm. And so we want to keep it simple. Our mission then is how do we plant the seed for generations to come yeah. uh, and, and throughout this process. So our vision, let them fall madly in love with Christ. How do we get there? We're gonna plant this seed. We're gonna model this seed. We're gonna live out this seed and we're gonna take them to the cross Amen. daily. You know, I, I'm thinking about this here and I know one of your patches is to begin to do um, different types of workshops in yes. different cities. Matter of fact, uh, where was it at? In Singapore, you said they shut down the city for a week and declared a National Family Day where you could begin to teach these things. And I know you have a passion to come wow. to Pittsburgh wow. uh, to do this as Absolutely. well. So those of you in our homes, we need to begin to pray yeah. that God will bring them here. There's never been a time like now that we yes. need clear-cut directors. We can't get it all right now. There's just, there's so much that needs to be done. But just take a brief, just 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and just talk about um, how, wh why your passion is to bring it to Pittsburgh. You know, we have to make it real, right? So in business, every 90 days, you have to reinforce your strategic plan, right? So we just can't tell them how to do it once and expect them to get it. We have to reinforce it over and over again, right? This workshop provides an opportunity on Saturdays, 9 to 3. We've been doing this all around the world. We've trained about 100,000 parents so far. Wow. 30,000 churches. Wow. I like to see the greatest Pittsburgh area churches Amen. come together right. and form one of the largest parenting workshops in the yeah. country. We need it today. Yeah. Amen. I, I think that is so many um, cries of parents' heart. I, I want my kid to fall madly in love with Jesus. Amen. More than I want my next breath, more than I want my next meal or my next Amen. promotion in life, I want my kids 
to serve the same God that I serve. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Terrence, thank for you. coming and joining yes. with us. I'm not the CEO, but <laughs> I would like to have you back. I think you do a great, great job and uh, got and such great ministry. he can pray with us at the end for all of yeah, our absolutely. family members absolutely. that call absolutely. in. So absolutely. if you have prayer requests, family members, you need God to do something in your family, call in. We want to pray with you, 888-665-4483. Get your hand on this book. It is a blessing. We're both committed to reading yeah. this, yeah. going to apply what we can into our families. So that's some really great things that he's doing. Let's take a look at what Sydney found in the good news. Sydney Grant for Good News 360. Here's how the Holy Spirit is moving around the nation. A diocese in upstate New York held a healing service for those wounded by the church. Audenburg put on a special mass for people hurt by the denomination. WNYF TV reports people from across the area came for the Sunday service. The diocese says the mass was the church's first step towards healing. The church hopes people who were hurt can hopefully find their faith once again. A new online directory helps those who are hearing impaired find a church. The service is called Deaf Church Wear. It lists ministries offering accommodations and resources for deaf church goers. The Deaf Bible Society set up the database. A men's ministry in Texas gets their hands dirty to help women get back on their feet. God's Garage repairs and gives away cars to single mothers, widows, and military wives that are struggling to make ends meet. So far, the ministry's mechanics have fixed 200 cars and given away 40. That's awesome. Well, that's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. There's so many great things going on in the world. You know, we sometimes live with a small mind mentality. We think like if we're in the Pittsburgh area or Philadelphia or New York City area, there's nothing going on in the world except what's in our neck of the woods. But there's people out there doing so many great things for God. And that's what I love about the good news. Right. And, and yeah, because you get a picture of yeah. like actual good things happening around the world, not just all of the bad, like we're kind of accustomed to seeing on television. The, the garage yeah, in yeah, Texas, yeah. just helping widows and single moms and military. I mean, I love that. I know of a garage um, right here in the Pittsburgh area that they give away cars to, you know, like good used cars that yep. they fix them up for, um, you know, college age kids that just wow. need a little help in life. And so, I mean, there really are a lot of amazing men and women that are doing good things. Amen. You know, and we need to be praying about how can we be a blessing? Right. Enlarge your vision on God. How can I use my gifts and talents? You know, we see, we just listened to Terrence, who was uh, the, uh, a part of the Fortune 500 Coca-Cola company, who's now taking his giftings and going all over doing what he's doing for the Lord. Ask the Lord today to show you on what you can do to use your gifts and calls and abilities in order to take the gospel of Jesus Christ out everywhere. That's right, because there is a great plan and purpose for your life. Well, let's check in with Tom Hollis to see how Cornerstone Cares is showing God's love in action. Well, when you're involved with Cornerstone Television Network, you're also involved with Cornerstone Cares, which reaches around the world through our mission outreach. And one of the furthest places it reaches, and I've been there, it's a long flight, is to South Africa, George, South Africa, and Life Community Services do tremendous work there. And we're here with the director, Marina DeVries. Marina, so good to have you back. That's good to be here. It's awesome to be here. <laughs> well, it was awesome for me to be in South Africa with you, but why don't you just re-familiarize our audience with Life Community Services and all the different ministries that you do? Okay. Um, Philip and I left Pittsburgh 17 years ago with to do life community services and people say to us, but why an outreach to children? Well, we believe that through the children we're reaching adults and it's a holistic approach, um, mind, body, soul, spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you've got a car and one wheel is flat, the whole thing runs skew. So we believe that these children need to be reached in every area. We've got a large number of child run and child headed families. That means there's no adults. So if they head there are no adults around. If they run it, the adults are either sick or um, not, a, you know, and, and that's something that, that was so amazing when I first found out about this is the, 
The devastation, we're not talking about a little bit of family dysfunction here. No. We're talking about complete destruction of society and families uh, because either through drugs or AIDS or various things, the parents TV. are either not involved or dead. Or, and, and then you've got a young teenager that's maybe the head of the family and then they can't go to school and then the other ones aren't learning. And you step in there and you're able to tutor them, you're able to give them, uh, uh, take care of the small ones so the older ones can go, all that. Yes, and you know what, uh, it's working. It's working and after 17 years we're seeing the results of it because now the older children do go to school. We take care of the little ones, they pick up their brothers and sisters after five o'clock because they stay in our aftercare where we help them. They all get a meal, so it's just a holistic input into the children's lives. But above all, mm -hmm. our main goal is to lead them to Jesus and to let them realize they're never alone. And what's your, what, what's, what's your success rate with that like? I think our success, success rate is huge because we're getting kids coming back to us now, they're adults now, yeah. who gave their lives to Jesus at a center. Uh, and a center is a structure with poles and a roof and a cement slab. It's not a center as we think a center. And you and have those in various townships around right. Georgia. I, I, we ministered one in a, a few days, and it's just a simple structure. I, now, in the, you have your main structure as well, yes. where a lot of the kids come and gather. And, and that's at what we call our kitchen property, and that's where a lot of stuff is happening, a lot of outreaches, holiday programs, and a lot of input in the children's lives. Well, and, and I love the kids. I mean, <laughs> they I, yeah, are they, I mean, uh, you know, they, 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 they get into your heart for sure. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about what's upcoming. What are, what are some, what's a new emphasis for your ministry? We're very excited because we, uh, as I said to you, we believe in the holistic approach. So education is a very important component. And unfortunately in South Africa, education has really dropped um, to one of the worst education systems in the world. Wow. And so what we're trying to do is get our children through. So they do our grade R or your kindergarten program. And then they land up in a class of 50 grade ones with one teacher and it's chaos. So, so they go from what uh, was a lot of attention in your preschool and, and, and kindergarten and then... Land then, up in this. Yeah, and it's better than no school, but it's not everything it could be. So what are you... And so what doing? we decided after a lot of prayer and thought and um, some of the uh, older siblings and the parents came to us and said, can't we start grade one? So we registered as an independent school and stepped out this year and started grade one. Wow, great. Our biggest challenge was that we couldn't dig foundations for our grade one classes, as you know, because we don't own the property. Mm -hmm. So we put it up on a platform and it's a wooden structure, so it's movable. <laughs> so you've got these. Yeah, you have a few of those on your yeah, property, do. don't yes, you? Even do. though it's a nice property and I know you've, you've got security around it and everything, so the kids are safe. But so you're starting grade one this year, you hope, hoping Hopefully for grade, grade two, two and then it'll just go, grow from there. And I was very ex encouraged because I got an email from back home and we've got uh, 15 enrolled for grade two next year, but we've got 30 enrolled for grade one next year. So okay. we, we're very excited. Well, we'll continue to pray for that for sure. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, you know, you guys went on a short-term mission trip and the Lord challenged your heart. I always say it's dangerous to go on a short-term <laughs> mission <very> trip <laughs> because uh, God gets a hold of your heart in yeah. a special way. Okay. Um, but uh, just to make it uh, personal, um, Natasha is, a, is a, a young girl that you had mentioned to me, a teenager that, could you just tell us a little bit about her story? There's so yeah. many stories because there's so many children you've helped over the years, but tell us a little bit about Natasha. Uh, Natasha came to us at one of our centers, typical centers, when she was about eight years old and she was involved with us with our program. She, but she always had promise, such a talented little girl. And she joined our Albus Blue Music Academy at that time and she got a guitar, for instance, to help her. And, well, her father was a, a, not just a drug addict, but he also was a pusher in the community and a dangerous man and very abusive, mm. but they it's kind of survived till she was about 15, 14, mm -hmm. and it just became too much. And um, we went in one day and took them out where he was just beating them all up and put them in the women's shelter. Well, when the mom came out there, she left for a little town somewhere in the Karoo to go and be safe with her kids, mm -hmm. but there was no infrastructure there. So 
a long story short, she fell out of school. She dropped out because she couldn't get to school. It was mm -hmm. 10 um, Ks to get to school. And it just became too uh, involved. She didn't have money to even pay for her school fees. Yeah, right. And we just didn't know where Natasha went. And, and then end of 2015, December, we got this uh, surprise when Natasha just walked in at our kitchen property, which you know where it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And we said, how did you get here? Well, she went and found cleaning work in a and b a bread and breakfast. And she took that money, got in a taxi, and came to us. And she's like, well, at this point, she's about 17 years old Yeah, she's so. about 16, 17, yeah. turning okay. 17. And, well, we were just so, what now? She said, now, I told my mom, you taught us God has a plan for your life. This is not God's plan for my life, to, to just drop out and become a, a, yeah. a just part of the statistics. So we tried to get her in a school. We took her in, and she stayed with us uh, between um, the mission's house and us. And uh, nobody would take her because she had been out of school for a year. So in uh, September last year, we went to this very, very fancy school in George. It's... <laughs> It's amazing, but it's all the rich and famous that go right, there. Right. They've got a hostel and everything. So we thought, well, we heard they give scholarships. So we went in to find out if we can get Natasha in on a scholarship. Well, we tried to tell the principal, but we just saw the lights are going out. And I just said, Lord, but I thought this is what you wanted us to do. And the Lord just dropped in my spirit, tell Natasha to tell her story. Yeah. Stop speaking. So I did. I said, Natasha, you just tell your story. Fortunately, she is very, very well spoken, and she's, and she told a story. Well, when she was done, the principal got up. He said, "You in? You starting tomorrow?" <laughs> he said, "You're going to finish this year with your class where you should be." And um, he told the one teacher to get her uniform, one teacher to get her books, and Natasha and started she there. there. Yeah. And she's, and she's doing well. And she's doing well. That's, that's a great story. And uh, I, I know that there's many stories like that. Well, thank you so much, Marina, for coming and sharing with us about Life Community Services. Uh, we, we know that we're so happy to be involved with you and happy to, that, that, that we could see Cornerstone's reach even touching South Africa. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And thank you for all the support from Cornerstone, Tom. We really appreciate it. And just know that God is up to big stuff through these kids that have come to him. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cuba, the land of enchantment. For over five decades, the doors of this beautiful island were closed to outside visitors. Now, more than ever, we need to encourage the Christians in Cuba and preach the gospel to those who haven't heard. Join our Cornerstone Cares special mission team November 13th to the 21st as we journey to Cuba for the first time. We'll be taking the gospel to the streets of Havana through dramas and neighborhood evangelism, visiting growing Christians in local house churches, teaching children about the love of Jesus, implementing community construction projects, and so much more. Cuba needs to hear the gospel in a fresh way, and we need you. Call today for more information on how you can be a part of the Cornerstone Cares mission team. This summer, it's a blast from the past. Join us June 16th on the Signal Hill stage for a special Jesus People concert featuring Randy Stonehill. Everyone's a homeless child. Honey Tree. It's because I got the spirit inside. And Cornerstone's own music group, Jubilee. Journey back to the 70s with us as we worship our God. Go to SignalHillStage.com to get your free ticket now. Well, praise the Lord. It's always so great to get into the Word of God. And so if you have a Bible, Luke chapter 7, verse 47 says, Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. You know, Jesus was in the home of a Pharisee when a woman of questionable sanity came in and began to wash his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. Of course, you got religious people that are in the room. They're all up in arms because she was a sinner. The Savior cleansed her heart and gave her a new start. He wants to do that for you today. Ask for forgiveness. Just simply humble yourself before him. 
and serve in his kingdom. You know, it's so good to know that we can be forgiven. You know, I think about family members today. I know God really has some for family. Maybe there's men out there that haven't done a great job taking care of their families. You know, you mentioned how you were taking care of the business but neglected some things in the home. But you know what? We can come to God, ask him to forgive us, and then we can start over again. Absolutely. You know, it starts here, and it's never too late. He makes up for those locust years. Amen. I'm thinking about some of the the parents right now that are kind of... um, holding their kids' sins against them. Wow. Like they're hurting be- because their children hurt them. Wow. They were, the children hurt themselves, hurt them. And man, let it, let go. Uh, forgive. As much as Christ has forgiven us, forgive your son and your daughter so that they can, you can move on in your relationship with God and that it releases them to, to flourish in life. I, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? I just sure. feel like there's somebody sure. out there that's just holding source, some sort of anger against their children for sins that they've done. And I believe that unforgiveness is one of the greatest strategic plans of the enemy. Snare. Unforgiveness breaks down uh, the unity that needs to happen in the home. Bitterness, it creates strife. And where you should be imparting the word of God, the blessing of God, the love of God, you're now harboring this unforgiveness and you can't sow the right seeds. Mm-hmm. And as a result, if, he, if the devil can pervert the seed, he can always pervert the harvest. Mm-hmm. So be willing today to let it go, forgive, and let's start fresh today. God wants to do a new thing in your family. He wants to do a new thing in your marriage. Let him do it today. And you know, we've got a couple of requests that came in, but beforehand, we have a salvation that I want to share real quickly. Robert Lunsford, age 68, gave his life to the Lord for the first time. Awesome. God bless you, Robert. Praise God for you. And we got a prayer request in from Oslo, Norway. See, that's why you need to be a harvest partner. The gospel's going out everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, A woman named Ruth Merritt called in, and she wants prayer for her grandson that's 26 years of age. He's dealing with depression. Ruth, we send the anointing all the way to Norway that God will work a deliverance in your son's life. And I know we've got some other prayer requests here. Would you share some, Pastor Amy? Yeah, yeah. Amanda here, she's praying for her husband, Mark, uh, for her father's salvation, and they want to have a third daughter. So we pray over them, man, you'll be fruitful and multiply and increase and God will give you the desires of your heart. And Janet has been praying for years for her husband's son and she needs a powerful work financially. So more husband, sons, family. Amen, amen. Could you share yours? Absolutely. Well, I like this family husband stuff. I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. right up my alley. You know, we have an author who's a father. He's, uh, he's going through some challenging times and uh, potential separation. So we're just praying uh, uh, for that uh, situation there and the Lord just move in a mighty way mm-hmm. uh, and bring that unity back into their marriage. Mm-hmm. And for Amanda, she's praying uh, for her children. Uh, Hannah and Andrew, Caleb and Jonathan, mm-hmm. we just play, uh, pray. We, we don't know exactly what her prayer request is, but, uh, but whenever you mention the children, we're just praying that she would just uh, continue to love on them and care for them and whatever their concerns are, that the Lord will work in their family in a mighty Terrence, way. Terrence, what do you say to somebody that is believing God mm-hmm. for their child yes. to be saved? What, what, mm-hmm. how do you... How do you pray for them, or how do you? What scripture do you give them? You know, when I when I think about children, I, the Lord had a tender heart for children. He says, "Bring them to me, mm-hmm. uh, let them understand who I am in my Word." And so, the Lord wants our, to know our children, and He wants our children to know who He is. Mm-hmm. And so, my prayer is simply uh, uh, that we just continue to to love well and to teach them how to love well and, and know who this Christ is. But he has a heart and a passion for our kids. He even challenges us to come uh, as the children would come. Right. And have that type of humility. And have a childlike faith. Yes. Yeah. But I think that, that you need to know that God wants your children saved even That's more right. than you want yes. your children saved. Yes. I mean, that that... I mean, pray right now that God would send laborers across their path. Mm. He'd bring the right friends in, get the wrong friends out, that just things start to happen where they just sort of get, start to get in the right place and the position for their heart to open to receive the gospel and just pray for them and keep praying because you will see it because God's word does not return void. You know, we many times underestimate the power of prayer. 
You know, a lot of times we might have a spouse that doesn't see our way and we're going through things with them. Pray for them. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 that the God of this world hath blinded the eyes and hearts of the unbeliever. And even the believer sometimes, Satan blinds us, but never underestimate the power of prayer. You can do more by praying than you can do by nagging somebody. So even right now, we're going to take a minute and we're just going to pray over these requests. And Terrence, would you just take a minute and just pray as the Lord would lead you and just speak life over these today? Absolutely. Well, Father, we, we seek your authentic glory by means of your amazing grace. Yes. According to the truth of your word. Father, yes. we just lift these prayer requests up. Yes, we do. You know them. You yes. know every word that's on these sheets of yes. paper, Father. Yes. So you are a God who can heal. You are a God that can talk about, you talk about forgiveness. You are a God that has forgiven yes. us. Yes, you have. And you've demonstrated that on the cross, Father, for on mm. our behalf, you have taken on those sins. Yes. And now you intercede. Mm. Next, uh, on our behalf yes. to the Father. So Father, the, whatever these concerns and, and praises and all types of uh, salvations coming forth, yes. we lift these up, Father, yes, so do. that you can do your mighty work in their life. Uh, Father, we just thank you. We praise you and we give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. One of my favorite scriptures for believing for your kids, if you're a mom out there, man, my children are taught of the Lord and great will be their peace. Mm. They have to, their hearts have to turn toward God, right? That's right, that's right. And you know, like I said, that power of prayer, you know, just never underestimate it. Speak the word of God over them, believe God and watch God do the supernatural. God wants your children saved. Amen. Like you always said, what did you say? The, the righteous should reproduce? Yeah, the right. <laughs> Amen. I do, yeah. They should. They should. Righteous should reprodu reproduce. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Terrence, for thank coming you. out today and praying with us. And we just pray God's blessing upon you with your book and yeah. your future ministry and even over your family. Your youngest child's 29. 29. And all of them are serving the Lord. We yes. praise God for that and we That's thank awesome. God for you. And always a pleasure to be with you. Pastor Amy, yeah, God Jay. bless you as well. Jay dog Amen. <laughs> and we thank God for all of you. Thank God for what he's doing in your life, for your family, for your future. God has a great plan for your life. So be encouraged today and know that we're praying and believing for God's best for your life. And we'll see you right here tomorrow on Real Life. Do you want to know a secret? The Real Life Newsletter is the best thing that I get in my mailbox each and every month. Packed with interesting articles, inspiring testimonials from viewers, and behind the scenes news from Cornerstone Network, the Real Life Newsletter keeps me up to date with the shows I love. Every newsletter comes with a handy program guide, so I always know what's on. Call today for your Real Life Newsletter. You're going to love it. Want a way to share Bible verses, inspirational photos, or uplifting videos with your friends and family online? Like the Cornerstone Television page on Facebook. Every day we'll keep you updated on show info, behind the scenes facts, and daily inspiration from our exclusive photos, videos, quotes, and more. Go to facebook.com slash cornerstone television to connect with us. We want to hear from you. Let's spread the good news of Jesus to our family and friends online. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.